February 27, 1900, Volume 3, The Divine Will Binds Jesus to the Soul, The Great Evil of Murmuring. Having abandoned all of myself in the lovable will of our Lord, I saw myself surrounded completely by my sweet Jesus, inside and out. By having abandoned myself in him, I saw myself as if my being had become transparent, and wherever I turned, I could see my highest good. But that which amazed me was that while I saw myself surrounded by Jesus inside and out, so was I, my poor being, my will, surrounding Jesus as though within a circle in such a way that he would not be able to find an opening to go out, because my will, united to his, kept him chained without any possibility that he might escape me. O oh, admirable secret of the will of my Lord! Indescribable is your happiness! Now, while I was in this state, blessed Jesus told me, My daughter, in the soul who is completely transformed in my volition, I find sweet rest. Her soul becomes for me like those soft objects which cause no bother to someone who wants to rest. On the contrary, be they even tired and suffering people, the softness and the pleasure they receive in resting over those objects is such that, when they wake up, they find themselves strong and healthy. Such is for me the soul who is conformed to my will. And I, as recompense, let myself be bound by her will, and I make the divine sun shine in her as in the full midday. Having said this, he disappeared. Then later, after I received communion, he came back and transported me outside of myself. I could see many people, and Jesus told me, Tell them, tell them that great is the evil they do by murmuring about one another. They draw my indignation and with justice, because I see that while they are subject to the same miseries and weaknesses, they do nothing but raise tribunals against one another. If they do this among themselves, what should I, who am pure and holy, do with them? According to the charity which they exercise toward one another, so do I feel drawn to use mercy with them. Jesus was saying this to me, and I repeated it to those people, and then we withdrew. February 27th, 1919, Volume 12 in the divine will, there is no hindrance to the love of God. Continuing in my usual state, as blessed Jesus comes, he almost always calls me into his will to repair or to substitute for the acts of the creatures in a divine manner. Now in coming, he told me, my daughter, what a stench emanates from the earth. I can find no place for myself. And because of the stench, I am forced to run away from the earth. However, you can make for me some sweet-smelling air suitable for me. Do you know how? By doing what you do in my will. As you do your acts, you will form for me a divine air, and I will come to breathe it, finding a place for me on earth. And since my will circulates everywhere, Everywhere will I feel the air which you will form for me, and it will blow away the bad air which the earth sends me. After a little while he came back and added, My daughter, how much darkness! It is such that the earth seems to be covered with a black mantle, to the extent that the creatures can no longer see. Either they have remained blind, or they have no light to be able to see. And I want not only divine air for me, but also light. Therefore, let your acts be continuous in my will, so that you may not only form air for your Jesus, 
but also light. You will be my reflector, the reflection of my love and of my very light. Even more I tell you that as you do your acts in my volition, you will raise tabernacles. Not only this, but as you keep forming your thoughts, desires, words, reparations, and acts of love, many hosts will be unleashed from you because they are consecrated by my will. Oh, what a free outpouring my love will have. I will have free field in everything. No more obstruction. I will have as many tabernacles as I want. The hosts will be innumerable. We will communicate each other in every instant, and I too will cry out, Freedom, freedom, come all into my will and you will enjoy true freedom. Outside of my will, how many obstructions does the soul not find? But in my will, she is free. I leave her free to love me as she wants. Even more, I tell her, lay down your human remains. Take what is divine. I am not mean and jealous with my goods. I want you to take everything. Love me immensely and take, take all my love. Make my power your own. Make my beauty your own. The more you take, the happier your Jesus will be. The earth forms few tabernacles for me. The hosts are almost numbered. And then the sacrileges the irreverences that they do to me. Oh, how offended and hindered my love is. But in my will, no hindrance, not a shadow of offense. The creature gives me love, divine reparations, and complete correspondence. She substitutes together with me for all the evils of the human family. Be attentive. And do not move from the point at which I call you and want you. February 27th, 1929, Volume 25. How all the saints are the effects of the divine will, while those who live in it will possess its life. My abandonment in the supreme fiat is continuous. And while I was trying to follow the acts of the divine volition as much as I could, embracing everything and everyone, my sweet Jesus came out from within my interior and told me, My daughter, the whole creation, all the saints, are nothing other than the effects of my divine will. If my will speaks, it creates and forms the most beautiful works. Each little motion of it are fragrances of prodigies that it casts over creatures. Its littlest breath casts varieties of beauties over the one who receives it. A true image of this is the sun, that by merely investing the earth with its touch of light, gives the so many varieties of colors, of sweetness, to all plants. No one can deny that by just letting himself be touched by its light, he has received the good it contains. My divine will is more than sun. Even if one only lets oneself be touched by it, its miraculous touch must produce a good that, perfuming him and warming him with its light, will make him feel its beneficial effects of sanctity, of light, and of love. Now the effects of my fiat are given to those who do my divine will, who adore its dispositions, who bear with patience what it wants. By doing so, the creature recognizes that there is this supreme will, and by seeing itself recognized, it does not deny to her its admirable effects. On the other hand, one who must live in my divine volition must possess within herself the whole life and not only the effects but the life with all the effects of my divine fiat. And since there is no sanctity, past, present, and future, of which my divine will has not been the primary cause, informing all the species of sanctity that exist, 
It therefore holds within itself all the goods and effects of sanctity that it has issued. And so the soul who will live in my will, by possessing its life with all its effects, will see within herself altogether all the sanctities that have been issued. She will be able to say, the others have done one part of sanctity, while I have done everything. I have enclosed everything within myself of all that each saint has done. Therefore the sanctity of the ancients, that of the prophets, that of the martyrs will be seen in her. The sanctity of the penitents, the great sanctities as well as the small ones will be seen. Not only this, but the whole creation will be seen portrayed in her. In fact, my divine will loses nothing by issuing its works. On the contrary, while it puts them out, it holds them within itself as primary font. Therefore, for one who lives in it, there is nothing that my divine volition has done or will do of which she will not have possession. What enchantment and amazement would it not be if a creature could enclose within herself the whole sphere of the sun with all of its light? Who would not say that she contains all the effects, the colors, the sweetness, the light that the sun has given and will give to all the earth and to all plants big and small? If this could be, heaven and earth would be astonished and all would recognize that each of their effects that they possess are enclosed in that creature who possesses the sphere of the sun, that is her life with all of its effects. But humanly speaking, this could not happen, because the creature would not be able to contain either the power of all the light of the sun or that of its heat. She would be burned, nor would the sun have the virtue of not burning her. On the other hand, my will has the virtue of enclosing itself, of making itself smaller, of expanding itself, however it wants to make itself, so it does. And while it transforms the creature into itself, it preserves her alive, and giving her all of its tints of beauty, it renders her the dominator and possessor of its divine dominions. Therefore be attentive, my daughter, recognize the great good of the life of my fiat in you, that while it possesses you, wants to render you the possessor of everything that belongs to it. After this he added, My daughter, one who lives in my divine volition, never moves from the ways of her creator and from being our repeater, that while our essence is one, one the will, one the life, one the love, one the power, we are yet three distinct persons. In the same way, for the soul who lives in it, one is her heartbeat, and in each heartbeat she forms three acts. One embraces God, the second embraces all creatures, the third herself. And so if she speaks, if she operates, in everything she does, she forms these three acts that echoing the power, wisdom, and love of he who created her, embrace everything and everyone. End of February 27th Fiat 